So check out this spreadsheet I've been working on. So I've got a list of procedures here and then basically a category, a category of the like the type of operation. And so I'm thinking that if I make a list of everything I might want to do on tomorrow's, you know, sound system calibration work, then I can help myself just remember in the future so that every time I go to do some work to make a list, I can, um, you know, have basically a menu of options to choose from instead of every time needing to remember like, wait, what do you do when you do sound system calibration? What are, what are even my options? So imagine, for example, that you might want to do some verification steps and you might want to make sure that your audio analyzer is set up properly. You might want to check to make sure that presets are all loaded. And you might want to, I don't know, let's check the polarity of all of our speakers. And so we make a big list of everything that we might think we might want to do that day. And then using data validation techniques in our spreadsheet, then when I select one of those operations, I say, I might want to start with some verification work. Then it reminds me, here are all of the procedures that you thought you might want to do. And I say, okay, great. I'll start with um, doing I'll, I'll start with doing an analyzer self-test and then maybe next verification step might be uh, let's do a continuity check and then I'll do my uh, polarity test and then I move on to placement and I don't have anything under, oh I do, okay, so I might want to do one of these guys and then I can fill in the rest of this but I've been trying to think of ways to help make this easier, or if not easier, help me th just think about the work I'll be doing in the field. How can I prepare so that once that I get into the field, I'll be ready to go? So this is the spreadsheet I've been building for an upcoming workshop called Follow the Sound System Tuning Roadmap. Um, this is happening in a day if you're watching this live. That's not true. This is happening on Saturday. So in two days, if you're watching this live, we're going to be talking about taking measurements, taking action based on those measurements, and understanding what we're doing. So there are two times available if you're interested. One's this Saturday, December 4th, and the next one is on Monday. And they're both two hours long, and recordings are available if you're interested in that. And so we'll be playing around with this and I'll show you one more interesting, potentially interesting feature I've been playing around with. So once I fill this all out, let's say I've made a big list of all of the things that I want to do in the field tomorrow. Now in the past, what I would do is I would just reor reorder these manually, right? So I would grab this and say, you know what? This actually needs to be down here uh, and this one needs to be over here. But with our spreadsheet here, we could actually use filters, right? So I could put a filter and I could say, you know, sort this list first by these uh, microphone groups uh, and then sort it by this and then sort it by that. But I realize if I'm always going to be doing the same sorting over and over again, I could have a, a copy of the same data on a different spreadsheet here, but it's always in order. And so this is the exact same information that I have over here but it's applying a custom sort, right? A custom sorting. So here in this first cell, I'm just using this sort command. I know you can't see this. Oh, there, it made it a little bit bigger. So it's sorting by column 10, 11, 12, then 13. And so what I'm thinking is that, uh, you know, the day before I do my pre-production work where I plan out all of the actions that I want to take and then I could potentially just print this out if I wanted a paper copy as a backup or I open up my computer or my tablet or whatever and I have the sorted list here and then I can just go through and check these off as I do them. And I could even, you know, make some notes about how they went or whatever. So we'll be using this on this uh, sound system tuning workshop coming up this weekend and I'll put a link to that in the chat right now. 
Hello, Sujit. Hello, Brett. Good to see you guys. Okay, so that's thing one I wanted to tell you about. Thing two. Tracebook is one year old now. It was almost a year ago, around Christmas or New Year's, that we launched Tracebook to the public for the very first time. And what's cool about that is that we now have 132 approved measurements. Now, as I'm saying this, I'm realizing that 132 may not seem like that much to you. But for those of you who have actually made uploads to Tracebook, um, you know that that's a pretty big number, if only because um, it takes some work to, to do this, right? Uh, you have to find a space that's going to work, you have to get your audio analyzer set up, you basically need like half a day to do all of this for a speaker. And then the first one you upload, you know, it might not get approved, so then you need to uh, make some changes. Anyway, it's sort of a process. So we are really proud that we have this many uploads approved at this point, and um, we have 783 members. Tracebook is free to sign up. If you don't know about it yet, it is a site that I have built with some colleagues and friends in order for all of us to share all of our loudspeaker reference data so that it's not just all of us working on our own to try to create our own libraries. We can share our libraries and our data with each other and um, you know create a community of data. So I'll put a link to this in the comments under this video as well. Okay, that's Tracebook. Um, some updates with Subaligner. So, Subaligner, there's a lifetime giveaway and it is ending in uh, less than a month now. And you may have seen me post about it on Instagram or Facebook. This is what the post looks like. Uh, if you've never heard of Subaligner, it's the app I've been developing over about the last year and a half that is designed to help you save time on subalignment. So it's designed to be fast and accurate and super simple to use. I have several other videos about it. But here I just wanted to tell you that if you would like to get a lifetime subscription to Subaligner for free, here's what you need to do. You need to upload a measurement to Tracebook and get it approved before the end of the year. So how do you do that? Well, you start by going to tracebook.org, sign up, and then you go over to the upload page. And on the upload page, you'll see there are some instructional videos for how we want you to do the upload. There are some examples here of things that get approved and things that don't get approved. And then you're going to fill out this form and do your measurement. Um, let me know any questions that you have about how to do that upload and how to get this lifetime giveaway. One other update that I just wanted to share with you about Subaligner is the education page. So there's a new page when you open the Subaligner app. You head over to this education page and you will see this recent workshop that I did called Subaligner in the Field. This is available to everyone with a Subaligner Pro subscription and that could be you if you enter yourself and get this lifetime giveaway, do an upload for Tracebook and get it approved. And you will have access to this education section and I plan to <clears throat> continue adding to this into the future. So I hope that in the future you would be able to come to this education page and find out everything you would ever want to know about how to use Subaligner in the field. Okay. So that was the lifetime giveaway. That was the education page of Subliner. And finally, I just want to share with you guys that I've been really enjoying doing some one-on-one -on -one consulting remotely um, with friends and colleagues and students. So if you go to the sounddesignlive.com homepage and you head over to the training page and then you go to private training and consulting, you can book some time with me to work on your sound system. Um, and there were some 
cool projects that I worked on recently. And one of them I re even wrote an article about. So my friend Nick called me up and he had me come in using TeamViewer and I actually acted as the smart operator. So I was operating the audio analyzer and then he was moving the microphone and then we had a third person, Dwayne, that was uh, operating the console. So I came in to be like the third technician and just operate the thing remotely and help guide it. And I also read an article about this. So I'll put this link in the chat if you're interested in that. And then if you want to read about how that whole thing went down, I wrote an article, step-by-step -step instructions, and I'll put a link for that in the chat as well. Um, what was fun maybe about this article is that I divided it up into pre-production, production, and then post-production. So basically, how did I prepare? Uh, how did it actually play out in the field? And then a section in the end, how could we have done better? Could this alignment have gone any better? What, what could we have changed? So that's what's coming up for me right now. Um, I hope you'll comment on this video and let me know what's coming up for you. What projects are you working on? Um, I'd like to check them out. So if there's a URL or you have some photos, I want to see what you're building. So I hope everybody is having a good, happy, healthy end of the year and um, looking forward to new projects and uh, new workshops and things in the next year. And as always, thank you for joining me and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.